Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of Talk of the Town. I'm James Milan. You know, I always enjoy when people come to the studio and we get to chat with them there as part of this series, but I gotta say I'm particularly happy whenever we get out and about around town. And uh, today we are visiting a new-ish art space in town. Um, and by newish, I mean it's been about nine months or so. And um, so we are talking to the three owners of Mystic Open Studios. Uh, it'll be Charlotte and Marina and Nicole that I will be speaking with. I'm going to ask you guys to begin with, though, just to introduce yourselves. And I know that while you might like this to be your full-time work, it is not yet your full-time work. Uh, so what is it that you do otherwise and uh, and if you want to speak to yeah please please go ahead and answer also uh, in this first kind of go around um, just like what it was that impelled you to take this particular project on because again let's just remind people this is a community art space um, where classes happen where activities happen where dances happen etc um, and we'll talk about that a lot more but that's part of your guys' collective vision, obviously. So if you can speak to that, that would be great. Why don't we start with you? Okay. I'm Charlotte Milan. I work for the town of Arlington Public Works. I'm the recycling coordinator. So waste diversion is a uh, passion, and uh, it comes with a lot of benefits. I get to know people in town. I get to know businesses in town, spaces in town, neighborhoods. And um, I get to invo be involved with a lot of volunteers. So I have a lot of community building and uh, community support as part of my day job. And so uh, starting an art space, really sort of art is very separate from what I do for my regular job, but it was something that I was feeling I could ha use more of in my life. And uh, I've really benefited and enjoyed a lot from the classes I've taken at Arlington Center for the Arts. It's really a fabulous program. So. I'm very inspired by the artists and the administration there as well. Great. Marina. Hi. When I'm not here at the studio, even though I try to be here as much as possible, um, I have a private practice. I work in mental health. I'm an expressive art therapist. So I've been in relationship with the arts all my life. Integrating it uh, with mental health is one thing that I do. Then I also go to different communities and bring art programs. and. A run programs uh, such as art, um, meditation and art, or art and relaxation. So I'm incorporating the arts as a tool um, to help people um, be present, to help people, um, you know, work with their mental mental health challenges. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, um, and I'm here doing. Um, what I love, which is to be with people and to be making art. My name is Nicole Weber, and I am um, a scientist by day. I'm an environmental biologist. I'm also trying to start a side business of upcycled interior design on the side. So I just got a truck last year, and I'm driving around picking up wood all over the community, so that's nice. Um, and I really wanted to start something. Um, I was in class with Charlotte at the ACA, and it just was really a nice community we created there in that room, and I just wanted to continue that vibe. Yeah, I mean, that's a great segue, actually, to what I wanted to ask about next, which is how did you three come together? Uh, I know, uh, I think, that you didn't know each other uh, a year ago, uh, either at all or very well. So how did that part of this happen? And please feel free to, you know, anybody jump in with an answer, however you'd like. One day at... Clay class, we had clay class every Monday, it was open studio, and this community just started to form over the year. And Charlotte was in there with me, and you know they were gonna switch the night to another night, and I'm a single mom, so that's kind of a no-go for me. So at that moment, I was just like, I really wanna start an artist collective. I need to have this community continue and do this somewhere where it's not gonna be broken up. Charlotte heard what I said across the room, and she came over and was like, what did you just say? <laughs> and um, she's like, I want to go for a walk with you and see what this is about. So we went for a walk, and she said I didn't scare her. So <laughs> do you want to take it from there? Yeah, it was intriguing. I've, I've fantasized in the past about having a storefront business and, or a uh, storefront community building something. And I, for me, it was always sort of amorphous. I didn't really know what that was going to be and whether it was ever going to happen in my life. And um, 
art is sort of the organizing factor, uh, something that we were doing at the time, something that I was getting back in touch with, spending more time doing, and something I've done since I was a little kid, but did, just thought of it as crafts and, you know, didn't take it very seriously in my life. So this, this was really an opportunity to um, partner with somebody because it takes a lot of energy to do anything. So whenever you can find another person, oh, what a relief. And, um, and start something new that's always exciting to me. And I usually always say yes. <laughs> so then we started out looking for spaces. And very quickly in that search, we, someone sent us an email from this person named Marina who was advertising office space for possible art space. And I had heard of Marina because Marina had organized a very successful online Skillshare during the pandemic where she brought people together. I'm just going to brag about you a little bit. <laughs> brought people together, teachers from all over the world, and, and allowed Arlington to, Arlingtonians and friends from the area to be able to have a little Zoom uh, class with somebody from some other part of the world. And it was just a really exciting thing. So I knew Marina was a mover and a shaker. And so we contacted you. Want to take it from there? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I was trying to, you know, make send me make ends meet, uh, looking for somebody to sublet my office. That's the, a couple of blocks away from here. Um, and I just it was like a thought that jumped ahead of me, saying, "Well, maybe not therapists. Therapists are doing mostly online work. Let me just add, artists are welcome too." And that's how you know we got connected. And um, in talking on the phone, I, I quickly realized that my office was not the space that they were looking for, but I got very intrigued by what they were both trying to do. I said, hey, I want to meet you. Can I meet you? And we just met. And a week later, and I was like, I want to be part of this. And a week later, walking by here in this space, there used to be a sewing school called Laura Sewing School, well-established school, very loved by the community. Mm -hmm. And uh, Laura was putting things away in the in the sidewalk, and I pick, I collect things, you know, like almost like you would. But I'm like, oh, what what are they throwing away? It might be a treasure for me. And then I realized this this was the space, and I said to Charlotte to Nicole, I think this is the space. And we came to look at it. The space looked totally different. Mm -hmm. And a week later, uh, on Charlotte's birthday, April 28th, mm -hmm. we signed a, a, the the lease to to be here. And we started painting the walls um, and transforming this space. Uh, really, each each time we were here, it was it's 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 changing all the time. It changes with not just the colors of the walls, but with each person that comes in. And we very mm -hmm. friendly ask, "What would you like to see this space offer? What would you uh, would you like to teach here?" Um, people that we everybody gets to know, we we bring in. Um, so it's really uh, become a place of community, which is what we, I think, with the three of us envisioned. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I cannot help but throw in the fact that I actually did meet Marina before both of you because I interviewed her because of the <laughs> skill share that she did. And I agree, it was really quite, quite an inventive um, and, and wonderful event uh, during the pandemic. So uh, more kudos to Marina for that, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm really interested to hear, I think I'm sure the audience is as well, um, what it, so it's a community art space and it seems like the community piece is just as important as the art piece, the art piece just as important as the community piece. How did you guys find a vision together? I know that you're saying, uh, what I heard what you just said Marina about the fact that you're still it's still evolving. You're still mm -hmm. wanting to get input and feedback from the people who walk in here about what it is that they're looking for. Again, you're kind of serving the community and reflecting the community in that way. That sounds great. But in order for the three of you guys to function together, I would think, you need to have developed a vision for the place. So speak to that a little bit. So I wanted to also do a shout out to Suzanne at Mosaic Oasis because she's been a really big guide on the side for us and that's how we all just sat down for the first time and said are we going to really go for this and um, she's been really supportive. The envisioning is an ongoing process and Nicole yeah. has guided us in kind of working through art and through writing about continuing to envision what we want for, for the next um, period. Um, I think we, in, we had an initial uh, idea which was 
to have 10 artists share the space. That was our original plan. It, it turned out that it wasn't that easy to find 10 artists to share you know, the rent. It, you know, I think there, the artists are out there, we just haven't found 10 artists. So then you know, to, to continue on this mission of um, having this be an art space, be for the community and with the community, we started to say, okay, what else can we do with the space? So then we started doing monthly dances. The, the quickly, those monthly dances became also an opportunity to invite somebody free from the outside. So, you know, we had a Colombian salsa person come, and then we, we had a belly dancer. The next month, we're going to have a drumming class open the dance, and mm -hmm. we're going to have some Israeli folk dancer come. So um, the, the vision is evolving. And we're tweaking it all the time. Um, so then we started offering workshops and uh, classes and inviting people to, to do the same. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes, it, initially, it was like a new teacher, Nicole and me taking the class. <laughs> you know, and then that class then took off. So sometimes, even we don't sh I think we don't shy away of having even like a one-on-one -on -one class, because as we're building this, a lot of people don't know about the space. Yeah, so it seems like there is a certain amount of, well, clearly, even in the origin story that you guys recounted, there was a certain amount of contingency, you know, Charlotte happened to overhear Nicole say that. You guys happened to, Marina mm -hmm. happened to be doing, you know, looking to, to rent out her space to, for other reasons. And, you know, so all that brings you together. But I'm sure that it's, and, and some of what you've described must be just uh, the same for all small businesses when they're first starting to get going and they realize, okay, that thing that we thought would work isn't, let's see what else we can do. But how do you keep from, uh, like, it can't be just haphazard, right? You have, to, you have to have an evolving vision, but not one that's just kind of veering all over the place, right? So what are the core principles? Like, again, what is it that you would, maybe a better way to frame it is, what would you like to see uh, this place doing and being and happening here a, a, a year from now, two years from now, et cetera? I would say somewhat more of the same of what we're doing now. I mean, I, when I, I think one of the w things that's really working well for us is that we each have our own gifts, our own networks, our own interests. Um, specifically, when it comes to see the variety of, of art pieces here, uh, what we're interested in doing ourselves, maybe teaching, maybe looking at, maybe displaying on our walls in, a, in a, some gallery shows that will be coming up. So we, we just we bring our unique individuality, but it has been really remarkable, I think, that we all share quite a degree of openness and, again, the interest in the community building piece. I mean, we could have just decided to split the rent and just make art here. But um, we're, we're constantly looking for ways to bring new teachers in, people who have never taught before but have a, a skill or an interest or maybe just want to try teaching. Right now we have a very talented ceramic intern from Leslie, which has been great. We have another, uh, another member right now who's moved from Western Mass for a few months who's brought us so much uh, core information about running um, a ceramics program. And, um, so because we stay open and I think we're drawing people who are open, open to sharing with us. And I think that becomes kind of an organizing principle in a lot of ways, staying open. Um, I think it'd be great also if, if Nicole told us a little bit more about uh, our climate uh, justice collaborative, because that's been a, a great way to um, be part of something much bigger. So right from the get-go, we've all had these things that we really want to have in this space, and one of them is climate justice initiatives and bringing in the community to discuss that. So we made a partnership with Extinction Rebellion. They come in here every last Saturday of the month from 10 to 12, and we make block printing or whatever they need for the next rally. And mm -hmm. it's been really, really fun. And they're going to teach us how to do blocks ourselves for the studio, and we can make t-shirts and whatnot. So it's just going to be, it's been really fun to um, watch that grow. I would also say that having three people in the decision power is magical because then you just go with the majority. It's just like, and we move on, and we keep on making decisions. And I have to give you a shout out, Marina, for thinking about having a dance teacher before the dance. I think that was a game changer, and it's really changed things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're learning as you're going. Obviously, yep. this is a very organic process, but I'm really glad also 
to have heard what you or to to have heard what you just said, um, because I think that when you speak about when we all speak about community and you guys speak about how this place will relate to the community, sure, there's a lot of individuals that can be well served coming in here and either doing art for themselves, taking a class, uh, just being with other people, doing working para in parallel, etc. See, I can see that for sure, but I think there's the other piece of the community, which is collaboration with other groups, other, mm -hmm. other entities in the space, such as Extinction Rebellion, as you were just saying. And I imagine that will be maybe part of something that you are continually to, continuing to actively seek uh, to, to nurture and build as well here. Yeah, we have no shortage of ideas. <laughs> that is for sure. Between the three of us, it can get a little out of control. But, um, but we have a lot of support. The people that have been coming in for workshops, for classes, are dedicated. Um, they come back week after week. They sign up for another session. And um, they're, they're really helping uh, cement us to this vision of, of uh, always being open. It's, it hasn't bitten us badly yet. It's only, it's only brought new and really beautiful happenings in this space. I think we also have a, a, like a handful at least of teachers locally that use our space for their workshops and stuff like that and they come back every month. So let's talk about the space and let's start right here. Like you, you just got, you guys have threw together, I have to say, since we came in <laughs> with our cameras, you threw together very quickly a number of examples of the work that ha has been done here, is being done here, including the table that it's all sitting on, which you've managed to obscure a lot of because you have so much other stuff. <laughs> but tell us about some of, the, some of the stuff that we can see here. I'll start with the table. Yeah. So the table, in, in creating the space, we wanted to have it be a flexible space. And we didn't want to buy furniture. So we, we collected wood from, I think, Charlotte's neighborhood and um, <laughs> came back and built some tables just to have them be, you can bring them together, they can lay on top of each other. They're just really versatile and fun. And you can get them dirty. <laughs> and we don't care. And because the space is, you know, basically we just have one, one room. Um, and the, the one room is being used for so many things. The tables can roll, they can stack uh, underneath one another. This particular piece, once a, once a month we have a creative night out. Uh, so sometimes it's hard for people to, to sign up for a regular class, but they want to use that creative muscle. So that's an opportunity to come and learn something new. So we had done uh, some alcohol inks on one of these creative night outs. Um, the next one that we're doing is gonna be about wearable art. I think the way we dress and the way what we, we put on ourselves is a way of expressing ourselves. So being able to create something like a jewelry piece or uh, something like this that, that has a story. Um, there's another, what, I also put this onesie in there to remind yeah, okay. me of um, one of the things that I'm super excited about that's happening in the space, which is an idea that has been with me for a really long time, which was to be able to offer um, a space for new moms. When I was a new mom, I, a lot of my friends I met in a new moms group, but it was just a talking group. And I wanted to have a space where I could go with my little baby and feel like a person, again, not just like a nursing mom or, or a person that's talking about what's happening with their baby. Mm -hmm. um, so um, together with, with a colleague, we, we put together this idea uh, and it's happening, it's taken off. We have you know, more people that we can accommodate once a week, a, an opportunity to have moms meet one another in such a special uh, time when they have a newborn. And then in that class, each, each class of the series has something different that's happening, whether it's crafts with babies, we put like, their finger footprints, mm -hmm. or teaching about baby massage or having a postnatal yoga class. So as part of the component of meeting others, it's also continuing to learn, which I do think it's uh, a core principle that we all can um, you know, want to put uh, forward, which is we can all continue to learn mm -hmm. uh, regardless of our age. Mm -hmm. Yes, I noticed that you, you know, when you said earlier uh, that you, know, you, might, you and Nicole might have been the first class, uh, you know, com composed the first class for a new teacher in the space, et cetera. I, I can imagine that 
each one of you is a willing, curious learner yourself around mm -hmm. a, about create around different forms of creativity and art, etc. And I hope, I guess, over the nine months you've been open, that each one of you has learn something new or a number of things that are new. So that's cool. Um, Charlotte, did you want to Yeah, let me tell you anything? about clay. So clay is something that um, takes up a lot of space here. Uh, <laughs> that's the way that Nicole and I met. Marina, of course, has done ceramics. She's done everything before. <laughs> this is a cute little collection of tiny vases that Nicole made that I just love. It's a great way for us to experiment with different glazes and different um, uh, decorative techniques. And we uh, will be looking forward to having mug building classes. That's a great kind of one afternoon way to uh, try making something out of clay that you can then use. And mm -hmm. it's a very tactile art form. Um, we have some other things here made from um, felt. And uh, we have a lot of textile activity going on here. There's a craft mm -hmm. circle on Mondays uh, mm -hmm. where people mostly do fiber arts, I think, and they will sit around in our lovely living room space and bring their own project. Or if they don't have a project they're working on, we have supplies and equipment to help some, get someone started on maybe a knitting project or a very simple weaving project. Um, really lowering the barrier for people. It's a drop-in Monday night, 7 to 9. Um, it's low cost. You'll meet new people and you'll see familiar faces. And it's just a wonderful way for people to experiment with what's it like to be here and uh, get to know us and we get to know them. And there's yoga right before. And there's yoga right before, which is really fun. We happen to be speaking to you on International Women's Day. And so mm -hmm. that's a great reason and segue uh, to ask you what, how, how much of Mystic Open Studio is really informed by it being a woman-owned business, um, or is that you know is that not that relevant? What, what I just would love to hear your thoughts on that. For me, it's become really important because my kid is witnessing this, and they're they're seeing their mom do something that I didn't know I could do. Um, I tinker a lot in the house, but now I'm actually offering classes in DIY and, and um, bringing them into the studio and doing art with their friends in the back. They have a pizza party and they paint the wall. And it's just been a magical place for me. Well, for me, it's a joy to be around uh, women doing this uh, in a collaborative, non-competitive way. Um, I that's one piece and the other piece is that even though we are women we are open to you know the other day which yes. is kind of a funny story but like somebody emailed hey I'm thinking about going to the belly dance class is it okay if I bring my partner who's a man and I was like sure no problem <laughs> the man ended up being the only man in the belly class but it was like you know do you have I said to the to the guy do you have a belly then you can belly dance you know like uh, we, we happen to be women, but it is a very inclusive and welcoming uh, space. Yeah. And that's what's, I think, important to us. Yeah, that's really important to us, to, to be a very safe and healthy place for people to come. And we've really been honored and blessed with some of the people that have come here and shown how safe they feel. And we really hope to continue that. And um, we'll be hosting some art shows um, uh, coming up that uh, we hope will also reflect really a wide uh, diversity of our community and, and the beauty that's out there and and um, we welcome people to come and check us out. In case we have folks out there you know who will be inspired to do to follow a vision of their own I'd like to just do some frank talking also about look, what have been, what have the challenges been for you guys what what is what is, what would you want somebody to know in the in the way of you know here's here's a hard lesson that that you, you know that we learned and that that you can benefit from? Or has it all just been smooth sailing? I don't know. Finding a name. That was our, one of our first challenges. <laughs> we had a yeah. long list of names. We kept yeah. texting each other, like Bring names at all, on, at all times. Like, oh, I woke up with all these names. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, well, we ended up with one that was, that's sort of a little magical, because we feel like there's some magic in how we got together, but also one that's place-based. Mm -hmm. You know, well, how cool that we live in the Mystic River watershed. and the Mystic River and Mystic Lakes near us. It's such a beautiful word. So um, I think we feel good about that. You know, there are challenges to starting a business, a storefront business, um, paying the rent. You know, that's a thing. That's a thing. 
we're so lucky to have um, fabulous businesses around us, the nail salon, um, uh, the bakery next door, but the pizza place and the, you know, the beautiful yeah. restaurants that are right next door. I mean, we, we have a lot of traffic through here. So we're right in Arlington Center. Um, that's been great. Parking can sometimes be <laughs> an issue, um, but being in this, the heart of the town is, is, I think, more of a blessing than, than anything else. Yeah, it, it does feel serendipitous that you guys are located in what is becoming, and, and, and maybe you're going to be part of, of this kind of ascension of this particular space, which is very close to Town Hall and Arlington Center, et cetera, just across from Jason Russell House. Um, but it's not been traditionally a highly trafficked place, not by right. foot traffic, especially because, as you say, parking's an issue a lot of the time. Uh, people would come for a very specific reason to get their shoes repaired or something like that, <laughs> um, but it wasn't it wasn't a destination, and it's t it feels like it is starting to become one. And of course, you guys are just about to go into the season where I think there will be a beer garden continuing yep. to happen across the way here. Maybe that will also uh, be something that you can make hay with going forward. Um, all right, we are just about out of time. I want, I want to make sure though that there's nothing important that you guys wanted to share or say uh, to the community uh, that we haven't had a chance to yet or that you'd like to take advantage of. Well, if you haven't been here, I would like to invite everyone <laughs> to come check it out. There's multiple opportunities to, to come uh, and visit. There's open studio times, which like people just drop in um, and all that information is on the website. Um, and if you have something that you really would like to see in the community, we, we are here to support the community. Um, so if we can make it happen here, we would we'll be happy to make it happen. Yep. And you can be a beginner. You can be a total beginner and um, we love that. And if you're a seasoned artist, come teach with us because we, uh, we, we all want to learn from you. Well, thank you very much for inviting us into your space. We really have appreciated this opportunity and, this, and the conversation as well. And we wish you the best of luck. Thank you Obviously, very much. This is Thank, going to you. Be a great Thank you, thing James. Tomorrow. Thank you. I have been speaking with Charlotte Milan and Marina Strauss and Nicole Weber, who are the co owners of Mystic Open Studio, for this episode of Talk of the Town. We appreciate these guys' time and their company, and we appreciate yours as well. I'm James Milan. We'll see you next time. ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help.